Since this pagination appears in two places, it's a good candidate for extracting a new view component, so we'll do just that. We'll create a new component under resources, JS, components, called pagination. We can remove the style tag since we're only using Tailwind CSS, and for the template, we can go to our index media component and grab all the pagination related code. This contains the navigation buttons and the input. Let's save it and then import it in our index media component. And now we can replace it in both places. We'll do one here and one below. Now if I go back in the browser and refresh, it looks just the way it looked before, but we are now using the pagination component. However, to make this component work, we'll need to know a few things. We'll need the total number of items so we can display this info right here. Then for the first button, we already know that it will always be one. Then for the previous and the next buttons, we only need to know the current page and then we can add or subtract one from it. And finally, we need to know the last page for this button. Fortunately, since we are returning a paginated resource collection, all this information is already present in the meta object under our media prop. So if I go here, we have our props, media, meta, and then we have current page, last page, and total number of items. So let's pass a pagination prop and set it to media.meta. And let's do the same for the first one. Now inside our pagination component, let's accept the prop. So we'll do props, pagination, it will be an object. And then we can use it to display the total number of items. So here we'll have pagination.total. And if I scroll down, here we have the total number of pages. So we can do pagination.last page. Go back in the browser, refresh, and here it is. We have 90 items spread over six pages. The next step would be to hide the pagination buttons and input if there's only one page of records. We can do that by adding a vif right here, where we check if the last page is bigger than one. So if we have more than one page, we display the buttons, otherwise we just hide them. To test this out, we can go to our media controller and set the pagination items per page to a ridiculous number like 10,000. Then go back in the browser, refresh, and here it is. The pagination buttons are hidden. Let's revert the pagination back to the default and move on to the navigation buttons. This is the button that should always go to the first page. We'll add a click handler and call a load page method that will receive the page number as a parameter. In this case, one. The next button is the previous page button. This should also call the load page method, but the number will be pagination.current page minus one. Let's skip the input for now and go to the next page button. This one will also call the load page method, but this time we'll have pagination current page plus one. And finally, go to the last page button, we'll have load page and pass pagination last page as a parameter. Now let's define this load page method. We'll go here and say methods load page that will receive page as a parameter. And then we'll simply make an inertia request to the current URL while adding the page as a query parameter. So we'll do this inertia get this page.url and then page 
page. If we go back in the browser, refresh, and test this out, they are working. However, if I continue to click the next button, we'll end up increasing the page number past the last available page. So we need to disable the buttons when they don't make sense. To do that, I will create two computed properties. One will be no previous page. And this will return a boolean telling us whether or not there is a previous page. So we'll do return, this pagination, current page, minus one, less or equals to zero. Then the other one will be no next page. And this will return this pagination current page plus one bigger than this pagination last page. Now we can use these two to disable the buttons. We'll use no previous page for the first two buttons. So we'll do disable if there is no previous page. And for the next buttons, we'll do disabled if there is no next page. Let's test them out in the browser. I'll refresh, go back, page six, five, four, three, two, one, and the button is disabled. Go page three, four, five, six, and the button is disabled. It would be nice to show that visually though, so let's decrease the opacity when the buttons are disabled. We'll go here and say class opacity 50 when there is no previous page. Same here. And here we'll have no next page. Let's refresh again, and here they are. Once I reach the end, the buttons are dimmed out. For the go-to navigation, we'll need a vModel to hold the value. So we'll do vModel equals page, and let's set this to number. And then we can call the load page method when the user presses the enter key. So we'll do key down, enter, load page, and we'll pass in the page. Let's not forget to add the page to our data. So I'll go down and say data, return page, and the initial value will be this pagination dot current page. Now if I go back in the browser, refresh, I can type in free, and here it is. Also when I go back and forth, the number is updated. However, if I type in two, press enter, it would be nice for this input to stay focused so I can navigate to other pages. To do that, we can set preserve state to true when we are making the inertia request. So we'll do preserve, state, true. Save, go back in the browser, refresh, say three, four, two, five, one. And now it's better. However, by setting preserve state to true, the component state will be preserved, meaning that the page here will no longer change whenever we navigate using the buttons. So if I go forward, so currently I'm on page two, but here it says one. We can fix this by adding a watcher on the current page property. So we can do, let's say here, watch pagination dot current page. And this is a function that will receive the new page. And we can set it this dot page equals page. Go back, refresh, 
let's navigate and now is updating. And of course, those other filters are also preserved. So let's say any date filter. And here it is. That's it. That's how you can build a custom pagination component for your Inertia.js and Laravel application. As always, the link to code snippets can be found in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that stuff. Bye!